Tonight on Nightline, fed up, meet the hammer, a consumer vigilante who made herself heard. And she's not alone. What started with a few angry people is now a revolution. From the global resources of ABC News with Terry Moran, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, March 25th, 2008. Good evening, I'm Cynthia McFadden. We begin tonight with some customers who insisted on customer service. Of course, we've all been stuck on hold waiting for help to fix our problems and after pushing all kinds of buttons and navigating a labyrinth of computerized menus, it's a wonder if we get a human being at the end of the telephone. Well, some people are fed up and they're fighting back and now some big companies are listening. David Curley reports. Meet Mona Shaw, a.k.a. The Hammer. She did what many of us only dream of, taking frustration over what she felt was a lack of customer service right to the company. One girl took off like a shot. She just ran like hell. <laughs> I don't advocate this, but uh, sometimes you just have to. And I, and I realized that, you know, at my age, what are they going to do, hang me? I don't think so. The Hammer is the latest frontline warrior of the growing consumer revolution, a movement which in a time of higher prices and tighter budgets has some serious ramifications. How about this? Americans like Michael Whitford say they are fed up with broken corporate promises. Here we go. His claim? That Apple refused to honor its warranty, so he posted this on YouTube. Apple claimed his warranty didn't apply because he had spilled liquid on his computer. I know your warranty doesn't say anything about intentional damage. How's about it, Apple? Helping me would be canceling the account. And remember when Vincent Ferrari posted his 21-minute phone call to cancel his AOL service? When I say cancel the account, I don't mean help me figure out how to keep it. I mean cancel the account. But let's rewind to the hammer. What would send a 76-year-old woman marching into an office and start beating on phones and computers? A failure to communicate. She said her brand new Comcast phone didn't work. She says she tried calling, then she waited at the Comcast office for two hours before being told the manager had left for the day. Two days later, she reached her boiling point. I said to Don, come on, we're taking a ride. And I went downstairs, got his hammer. I said, let's take a ride. So he drives me down to Comcast, and there's a long line of people, and I walked in past all of these people, leaned over the counter, and started whacking away at their telephone. And also a keyboard. I knocked over the monitor, but I didn't damage that. And uh, asked them, I said, now have I got your attention? She did indeed. And she got the attention of the police, who promptly arrested her after she put down the hammer. After all that, she canceled her phone and TV service and got an apology as part of a statement in which Comcast says, we are working hard to increase customer satisfaction. Mona has become a star, ranking up there with this Comcast repairman, caught on video sleeping on a customer's couch on hold with Comcast customer service. This is a great thing because the guy is not only asleep on the customer's couch, he's asleep there because he himself is on hold with Comcast because he has no other way of communicating with them uh, than the one that you have. It's, it's just, it's just a, it's a, a YouTube video of crystalline purity. Bob Garfield is a media critic and radio host, but he's joined the rebels of the consumer revolution. Yeah, I am a consumer vigilante. I, you know, actually more of a jihadist because this has ceased to be, this has ceased to be just law enforcement for me. It's more of a holy war. He too signed up for a Comcast phone, which he says didn't work. This is not just a joke. And I can tell you from personal experience that sometimes phone service simply cuts out. And that means if you're having a heart attack or if you or you name the, the catastrophe, your house is on fire and you go for the phone and it's dead, maybe soon you will be too. And, uh, you know, this is not something that anyone should take lightly. Garfield certainly didn't. He took up electronic arms on the Internet with a blog ominously titled Comcast must die. Garfield's complaints about Comcast were echoed by others, a lot of them. I wasn't surprised at all because I had tapped into such a, a vast vein of consumer frustration 
and rage. I mean rage at, at how horribly people are treated. For my dead body. Garfield says he shamed Comcast into fixing his problem. But there's no peace pact here. The blog remains. And something surprising started happening. Comcast officials started reading the postings of other customers and started fixing their problems too. You are now part of the consumer complaint department at Comcast. People yeah. can come to you and complain and Comcast responds. Yeah, this is so ironic in so many ways. First of all, they're doing, they're taking care of the worst customer service problems on a site called ComcastMustDie.com. I mean, how humiliating. The second bit of irony is that this is all made, made possible by the digital revolution, by the web of broadband that connects us all. That and Comcast provides. Comcast provides. They strung the very cable that I'm now wrapping around their neck. It's a formula that's working for many. Remember Michael Whitford? He reportedly got a new computer from Apple. They all took their rage to the new megaphone, the World Wide Web. The beauty of the digital age is <laughs> they don't have to take it anymore. You're no longer just screaming into the dark. For consumer vigilantes like yourself, is this the beginning, the middle, or the end? Oh, it's the beginning. It's the beginning. The genie, I'm sorry to use the cliche, is, is out of the bottle, and it's never going to be put back in. Mona, the hammer, the newest soldier in that revolution, paid $345 in restitution and must stay away from the Comcast office. For her, those are just badges of honor. You know, this country wasn't started by people sitting back and saying, gee, okay, let's the English do what they damn well please. And you know how to use that hammer. You're darn tootin'. Welcome to the revolution. As I, as I said, I'm David Curley for Nightline. Come on, move. Ooh, Comcast declined to be interview on ca uh, interviewed on camera, but told Nightline it was sorry for any customer issues Ms. Shah experienced and said they are dedicated to improving customer satisfaction in each of the more than 300 million interactions the company has every year.